Hey guys, welcome to today's topic, which is follow up. Fortune is in the follow up, and this is super hard for a lot of people. Um, pretty much everyone, really, until you become comfortable with it, and that's okay because uh, you have in your head. A lot of you probably have in your head that you don't want to be uh, icky. You don't want to be a salesman. You don't want to be bothering people. You don't want to be pushy. And you have that equated with following up. And that's unfortunately not the case. So we need to get rid of all that mindset and realize that that's not what follow up is. So what I'm going to talk about is actually um, three P's of follow up. I wish they were F's. That would make more sense to me, but they're P's. So uh, number one is to be positive. So what I mean by that is, so the conversation has ended. We've ho um, hopefully overcome the objection, not in a way that means they had to say yes, but we've used our feel, felt, found method and tried to overcome the objection so that the conversation's open. And now there's going to come a time where we have to follow up with them in the next couple weeks. And what I want you to do is keep it so the conversation is open. So when you're ending it and it's a no, not right now scenario because of money or because of time or because they have to think about it or whatever the reason is, just keep it positive. Not, you know, okay, they didn't buy, I'm done with you kind of attitude, but rather, girl, I'm here to help you still. So let's keep in touch. Let me keep you updated on future challenges if that might be a better time for you or you're able to work through some of these things that we've discussed and let's just keep it open. Does that sound good? I mean, most people are going to say that sounds good and then you have that line of communication still open. Uh, so you're keeping it positive, you're creating trust, you're creating a friendship and it's going to be more natural to follow up. Now I also want to say when I say the word follow up, that doesn't mean every time you talk to them that the follow up is do you want to do this challenge? It's more of a way of messaging and keeping in touch, but it's also really important part of the process so that you don't feel icky and salesy when you do invite them again, because that's coming. Because like I said, on my list of 60 people that I've invited this month, you know, most of them, 50 of them are not going to do it. So they are going on my list for next month because they are people that I'm going to continue to follow up with. So, okay, number two, you have to be persistent. So you do have to keep in touch with them. So some ways to do this um, by not being a pest, because I don't want you to be a pest, I just want you to be persistent, is you need to do it correctly and you need to add value to people's lives and you need to nurture that friendship and continue to build that trust. So an easy way to do this is every couple weeks, since they're on your list, you have their name right in front of you, um, go to their Facebook page and add value and also send them a message. What is something that they had been struggling with? Because at this point you should know what are some of the things that they have struggled with or what are some of their goals and some ways to talk to them or that they have trouble feeding their family with three kids and trying to eat healthy. So something I might do is send some kid friendly recipes over that are really healthy for my challenger or hopeful challenger to enjoy as well. So that would be something that you could send and add value. You're not inviting them again, but you are following up. You are seeing how they're doing. You're seeing if they're making any headway on their own. Um, maybe they never ate breakfast. Maybe I'd send some great breakfast easy tips ideas on eating breakfast. Um, anything that you see that kind of triggers you know, something to add value. Uh, I still do this. Like I had a challenger ask about because you never stop doing it with your challengers too. Uh, I had a challenger ask about popcorn the other day and really microwave popcorn, um, popcorn at a movie theater, definitely like top 10 worst grossest things for you. So I offered her some suggestions and then scrolling through Facebook, I actually saw a recipe for the brown bag popcorn and I, I, um, tagged her and contacted her and sent it to her. She's already a challenger, but this is an example of someone, something you could do for someone um, that is not yet a challenger and a way to follow up. So that's number two, be persistent. And the last one is to be patient. Uh, if you are doing these things uh, and then, you know, starting the conversation 
and then it's leading to, hey, I just wanted to let you know that I did have another challenge group starting the end of this month. Uh, if you're still thinking about it or have questions, just let me know. That's it, guys. I'm not pushy. I'm not like, are you ready to do it now? Like, are you ready to do it now? Are you ready to do it now? That's that's gross. Like that's going to get you unfriended. That's not what a good coach is going to do. But by me adding value to them, maintaining the friendship, maintaining the trust and being persistent and adding them to my list every month and keeping up with them uh, and still re-inviting them to things and helping them on their journey is going to pay off. I do have people that it's been over a year and they are just now joining. So if you're a newer coach, think of all the people you're talking to now that might not be ready to do it till October, November, December. There's a lot, but here's a guarantee. If you were to quit inviting them or if you were to quit coaching before October, November, December, they're going to go to someone else. They're gonna go to me, they're gonna go to someone else on your team. They're gonna go to Summer. They're going to go to someone else because we're not leaving. We're gonna keep going. We're gonna stay committed because that consistency equals trust. So you have to be consistent with these people. You have to be positive. You have to be persistent. You have to be patient and they will come around. You, you can't help and save everyone as much as we want to, but these qualities, and the power and fortune of following up with people will separate you from other coaches. They will help you earn your success club points. They will help you help change more lives uh, because people need you to remind them. They need you to add value and they need you to keep asking. So it's extremely, extremely important to follow up with these people. So if you have questions on that, uh, on anything else that I didn't cover, uh, just ask and uh, have a great day. Talk to y'all soon.